Okay, so I can start, right? Yes. All right. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Alexandru Produtsu. I'm a senior JavaScript developer at uh, One and One. Our department is called uh, Mail and Media. Uh, let me give you a short, quick context about uh, One and One. It's um, mostly known uh, for uh, hosting. Uh, they are her uh, fun fact is that they are uh, Borussia Dortmund's main shirt sponsor in Bundesliga football this year um which i think is as cool as the collabora online short name pun intended uh let me show you the the logo here i have the t-shirt <laughs> okay so um we uh apart from this one one has several uh portals like uh, webd uh, gmix.net or mail.com um, which provide different uh, services such as uh, mail cloud hosting and of course editing documents with a product called uh, online office editor which is built uh, with a uh, cool uh, this is how it looks like uh, as you can see uh, cool uh, occupies like 90% of the screen and the rest is uh, um, the, the sidebar with uh, the different options to uh, view the most recent files to upload and uh, to switch to a different application like I told you we have uh, several of those so uh, now let's talk about uh, integrating cool from a ui perspective uh, into a setup so uh, there are custom ui changes tweaks um, that uh, should be expected when you integrate cool into um, another application or into a, pro, uh, a portal and uh, you have to to plan for them on how to integrate these into your project um i've uh, I've included like two categories, two types of code changes, though the, those that will benefit the community as a whole and those that are specific to your project. So the changes that are benefiting the community can be applied in the uh, original cool code and the others uh, should ideally treat cool as a black box because they are particular to your, pro uh, to your project, such as uh, minor UI changes to integrate into the overall theme um, and other uh, particular things that uh, are specific to your project. So uh, the changes benefiting the community should be uh, ideally documented into a central place to keep uh, track of them. You want them integrated to the community as soon as possible so that you don't have to uh, reapply them with uh, every uh, cool update in the future and uh, a good thing would be to also uh, have some comments in the code so that uh, they can be easily discoverable in the code and um, ideally even to link to the original task or, or bug in jira or whatever software that you are using to track these um, these changes into your project so let me show you what I mean by that um, comment uh, standard. Um, we have uh, a convention to use OE update into our code to mark these changes. And as you can see, when we do a, a grip in the Linux uh, CLI, we can have we can see immediately all the files that have uh, custom changes uh, applied to them. so um recently we have opened uh, four prs uh, and uh, they have been all uh, all merged into master and we are planning to open uh, 16 more uis wise ui wise sorry about that um from these four um two were features uh, one was a bug fix and another was a demo that was 
uh, contributed to our documentation. Uh, and the demo was uh, basically our mini application uh, stripped down with a sidebar and allowing you to um, to open multiple uh, instances of the editor uh, at once. So if you want, you can check that uh, yourself by uh, running that uh, demo locally. So now let's talk about custom changes specific to a project. Um, you want to keep these custom JavaScript, CSS or HTML changes into a uh, new folder um, so that they are grouped together uh, in a uh, specific place that you uh, you know of. Uh, you don't want these mixed together into the cool code because it will uh, get messy and uh, uh, you will have to uh, think about that when you reapply these uh, changes when you upgrade. Um, uh, an important thing is to build cool with uh, the production flag enabled and that will output a single JavaScript file as well as a single CSS file. Uh, bundle.js and bundle.css is what they're called and they are uh, in the this folder. Uh, you can prepend JavaScript changes to the bundle and that's how we do it and you can append uh, CSS changes to it. You run make, you concatenate that custom, uh, those custom uh, JavaScript uh, and CSS changes to the cool bundle and then you minify everything. And now let's see how uh, how we do that uh, with uh, some simple npm commands. So we are um, outputting the CSS code and then minifying it and adding it to the uh, bundle. We have another command for uh, building the assets, which are uh, uh, project specific assets, such as, uh, for example, new icons. And um, Next is the build uh, JS. Uh, we do a similar thing uh, for the JavaScript files that we have. We output them uh, and minify them uh, into the uh, into the final bundle. We we uh, prepend that uh, we um, prepend that to the final bundle. And the build command contains uh, everything all together now. So first we go um, into uh, upper directory from our custom folder. We run the uh, original um, build for cool. Uh, we clean up things. We run make with minify false because we actually minify things together at the end. And that's about it. So what is not shown into these slides is that we also uh, take the this folder we publish it to our internal NPM registry, which is Artifactory. Artifactory is for Java originally, but it can be run as an NPM registry. And after that, we trigger a job that uh, gets that package, which uh, is actually the disk folder, uh, unzips it and pushes it to a CDN service. Um, this package JSON uh, that you see here with just a few commands has a separate version um, to the cool um, one because we want to track this as being a, a separate project because of uh, these changes. Um, so here are some examples of uh, custom changes that we apply to our project. Uh, we have overridden the native uh, WebSocket and uh, Ajax constructors uh, constructors in JavaScript to open that sneaky Java G session ID everywhere that we have to carry. We froze console log so that others developer, other developers will not turn into Lime Nelson from uh, Taken and chase you everywhere. <laughs> uh, actually, I lost like 30 minutes or one hour asking myself why are not my log uh, messages outputted into the console. <laughs> um, we changed a few icons, uh, as uh, I mentioned previously, to make the application look more uh, similar to uh, the um, uh, look and feel of the others. We also integrate uh, intercepted uh, clicking links. So they, they go through a DRFR initially. 
So if you click on a, in a document on a link, it will redirect you to an internal uh, to our uh, in URL pertaining to the DRFR, which will scan for malicious website, for example, websites, for example. And um, yeah, that's that's the main reason. I think probably might be some tracking as well, if if you need it. Um, what I want to mention uh, from these four examples that is that we are also considering to um, contribute to the community, the first one and the one with the intersecting clicking on links. And we think that we might be able to do that in a generic way and uh, in a, a way that is optional um, for the users if they want to use this um feature or not and uh, many more others we we had a talk with um first in our team and uh, after that with the cool guys <laughs> uh, and uh, talked about all these changes and how we can contribute them to the community and if they are useful so uh, the final goal is, is to, goal is to keep the current customizations to a minimum and if possible contribute everything to the community uh, which means that others will benefit from your work and improve the code that you have contributed and uh, another benefit for you is that you don't have to reapply uh, these customizations each time that you upgrade to a newer version of a uh, call so it's a win-win for everybody for your project and for the community as well. Um, thank you very much. And if you have uh, any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Thanks, Alexander.